The Wheat School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by CNMC, Syngenta Canada, and the Alberta Wheat Commission. Peter Johnson at Wheat Beat, realagriculture.com, and I'm ever so excited to be back doing real wheat growers. And now we have a new program. It's the first year we've had it here in Ontario. It's the YEN, the Yield Enhancement Network. We stole it from the UK. It is ever so cool. YEN is sponsored by Grain Farmers of Ontario, the University of Guelph, OMAFRA as well. What's cool about this is we're also working with the Michigan Wheat Program and Michigan State University. So we have people in Michigan, we have people in Ontario, we even have people out of Ohio. What is Yen all about? Yield enhancement. It's the Yield Enhancement Network. The growers, if you join Yen, you get to look at what other growers are doing that are top growers. But what's really cool is that you compete against yourself. We figure out what your maximum yield potential is if you did everything perfectly. And then you can see if you're 40% of potential or 60% of potential. But of course, we always have great wheat growers. And joining us today with uh, the third place, third highest yield bronze in the Ontario yen is Jeff Cook from Maple View Farms. Jeff, Welcome, 148.6 bushels per acre wheat yield. That's incredible. Tell us how you did it. Yeah, great to speak with you, Peter. Um, well, I, it's hard to pin it down to one thing. I think uh, obviously uh, we have a nice piece of ground there. So I got to thank my ancestors for uh, where they chose to settle a couple hundred years ago. But uh, aside from that, one of the the other things that maybe stands out to me that we did different from some of the other growers was our, our kind of nitrogen management, planting date, uh, split application strategy. And, and a lot of that boils down to managing lodging and, and how much nitrogen we can get into those plants without running the risk of lodging. So um, the one thing um, would be our, our rotation. So coming out of uh, green beans in this case um, we've got a lot of that uh, residue and timing that mineralization there is a lot of uh, added nitrogen in that system um, and so we kind of have to work with our split applications to kind of manage that in in terms of managing lodging and, and risk to lodging and, and getting more nitrogen into that plant so we've gone in this case we went to a three pass uh, nitrogen application strategy where we put a little bit uh, on early with some sulfur and then came back uh, with a liquid application and then again with uh, another dry application at uh, Flagley. Yep and so that's I mean first off rotation 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 but after green beans gives you a leg up and what's interesting is you had two different entries in the yen and the second entry was after white beans which most of us would die to have wheat after white beans but your wheat after green beans your uh, snap beans actually yielded about 10 bushels per acre more than even after white beans to hit that 148 and 100 percent so you get that nitrogen credit so just give us a little more specifics if you can you, you said three applications the first one when do you put it on how much the second one the third one just time us yeah sure so the first one would be just some ammonium sulfate dry product maybe 100 pounds um usually usually we target that on like on the frost in march end of march or something i think in this case it was actually uh towards the end of march maybe early april um not on the frost it was actually fairly dry and then um just depending on the weather and and timing and that and if we've had maybe some early warm weather and gotten a lot of mineralization that's maybe when we push that second application back a little bit um, so that we're not running that larger risk of lodging um, and then we kind of tailor that um, that amount of n um, depending on the stand we've got there so tiller count something like that as well and uh, I'm kind of going by gut right now. I'd, I'd love to put a little more science to it and, and get some tiller counts and come up with a formula, but we haven't got that far yet, but uh, maybe in time. Uh, and then um, just coming back with the balance at flag leaf, kind of when you're getting um, kind of beyond that lodging risk uh, uh, plant growth stages and, and can get more into the head, I guess. 
And, and so that's really interesting, uh, your tiller count. So how much would you put on, I mean, if you put 100 pounds of ammonium sulfate up front, that's 20 mm-hmm. pounds of nitrogen, 21. So then when you come back on, say, April 20th or somewhere in that range, how much would you put on and, and does it make a difference how much you put on there from a lodging standpoint? Sure. Yeah. So I think depending, and I kind of had a, a rough formula. And so at that time on this site, we uh, did uh, about 20, 22 gallons of 28%, I think. And that was right in that April 20th or so, maybe a little earlier. Um, I think the earlier we go, maybe we'll want to back that off a bit and kind of put a little more to that uh, last application, just in terms of managing lodging. Um and then, of course, uh, yeah, the flag leaf application, we used uh, Amidas, maybe 120 pounds or so of product. So, uh, so yeah, that for the balance of the nitrogen, which I think in this case was 132 total pounds of N. So not a lot when you're talking about kind of pushing yields. So there's some room there. But as I said, lodging is a big concern. So we did use one growth regulator on uh, on this field this year. Um, I'd, I'd uh, explore the the uh, thought of using two and maybe some more nitrogen in the future to kind of push things a little further. But, uh, yeah, certainly, um, higher nitrogen rates is, is part of the puzzle, but, uh, managing lodging is a big concern too. Yep. And from that perspective, amazing. You had uh, over a thousand heads per square meter in that winning field and we we would say if you're over 750 heads per meter squared you're going to make that wheat go flat did the wheat go flat or did it stand up for you no it all it all stood fine actually the the whole field was fine so usually in some cases we kind of see it just starting to lean and, and we did in spots i guess um but for the most part it all stood well so um i think we're kind of right on that limit but uh i, I it might take some uh further uh tweaking to, to kind of push that nitrogen limit higher and, and really go after that 160 or whatever you want to call it uh, yield goal or certainly higher in the potential right we want to get up there um, yeah the that's potential kind of the, was yeah, 240 that's, right that's so so you still have more more to go but yeah, but, yeah. 25 r40 so a, a great variety to stand and that nitrogen management really interesting so quickly just from a planting date standpoint you're planting early are you cutting seeding rates what about your planting strategy yeah sure so we used to plant mid-september um in those instances after processing vegetables were kind of that window's open for us but uh lodging has become a concern of course you've got kind of the the earlier season uh risks as well um to go too early but uh we've been trying to push that back towards october 1st so i think in this case we were the 20 fourth or fifth of September. And of course, in that scenario, we're cutting rates a little bit. Uh, I think we were 1.3, 1.4 million seeds per acre. Um, and certainly we up that as we go on in the fall um, and up that on for heavier dirt as well. Um, so yeah, that's all a part of the, the lodging risk, the tiller management uh, strategy. Yep. No, that's really cool because uh, even at, at 148 and at a thousand, like I just, that number blows my brains, a thousand heads per square meter. But, you know, there's still more room to gain more yield. And you can see that in terms of the number of seeds per head that you have. That's actually a fairly low number. And, and your harvest index was a bit low, which just suggests last year we got into that cloudy weather and late grain fill. So the yen, mm-hmm. th- there's tremendous pile of data. You'd agree with that, Jeff. There's just a tremendous pile of data that you get from the yen. What, what did you learn from the yen that you're going to change for this year's competition? What's your next thought process? Yeah, sure. So some of the numbers, um, a little more uh, higher resolution soil sampling and some tissue samples that came back that kind of indicated they were a little lower than we wanted to be with uh, phosphorus. So I think that's just that just emphasizes the importance of, you know, variability across the field and the importance for higher resolution sampling techniques. Um, and certainly, uh, you know, in a high yielding area of a field, uh, your removal is that much higher, right? So maybe uh to pay attention to those areas a little in a little more uh detail i guess um and maybe watching where uh where we put these plots maybe a bit too but uh 
Yeah, and aside from um, some of the other uh, data that we got back, uh, some of it kind of indicates that maybe we're doing some things right. But um, yeah, certainly there's room for improvement. I think there were a couple other things that would have changed. Um, our weed control at this site was okay at best, I think. Um, we deal with some uh, a lot of chickweed pressure and stuff like that coming out of processing vegetables as well. So um yeah there's always you can always do better right so that's the fun part is uh seeing those uh yield potential um numbers and, and where we're at on that scale and and trying to improve it's, it's fun stuff so there you have it wow even with amazing yields we still are looking to do better jeff cook Mapleview farms the yen program putting it all together nitrogen management rotation planting date very, very cool stuff. Peter Johnson at Wheat Pete, realagriculture.com. The Real Wheat Growers Series. Whatever you do, grow great wheat.